Leontine Price, Voice of a Century. Nineteen twenty seven, Laurel, Mississippi. The line between black and white was as wide as the Mississippi River was long. All a black girl from the cotton belt could expect was a heap of hard work. As a maid, mill worker, or sharecropper, her song would most surely the blues. Yes, the Mississippi Delta cradled the misery. But from day one, Mary Violet Leontine Price heard a different refrain. Her mama, Katie, singing hymns. Her daddy, James, playing tuba for the church band. The flock greeting praise songs with hallelujahs. Leontine had plenty to be thankful for. A mama and daddy who made sure Leontine had two pairs of shoes and knew she was as good as anyone, black or white. Their song of encouragement rose above the color line. Wasn't long before Leontine was finding her voice, singing along to her daddy James's record records and listening to the Metropolitan Opera Saturday afternoon radio broadcasts. She soaked up the sopranos, if not the foreign, foreign words, art songs and arias shaping a brown girl's dreams. Soon, Leontine was plink-planking a toy piano until she caught the performing bug for good. Her parents sold their phonograph to pay for a real piano and for lessons. At her first recital, her feet didn't even reach the pedals, but the songs came through her fingertips. Then, little Leontine saw Marian Anderson, the opera singer from Philadelphia, who was already studying in Europe when Leontine breathed her first solo. Marion glided on stage in a whoosh of satin. Her song, like a torch, sparked a light in Leontine. That Easter Sunday in 1939, when Marion sang at the Lincoln Memorial after being barred from a whites-only concert hall, Leontine was in the church choir, praising God with her gift, a song of promise welled up in Leontine as it had in young Marion. With her suitcase, she rode to a bus, rode a bus to college in Ohio, aiming to be a teacher, the concert stage out of reach for a black singer then. Until the college president heard her, heard her solo and convinced her to study voice instead. Leontine changed course. Led by song, she cracked the door that Marion had opened years earlier. And before long, Leontine went to Juilliard. There, she found her teacher, Florence Page Kimball, and her calling. But the door to the Grand Opera would have to wait. First, Leontine starred on Broadway in Porgy and Bess. On a world tour, her song rose to the rafters. When the curtain did rise on Leontine's opera career, she took bows as Wild West saloon owner Minnie as Cho Cho San and Madame Butterfly and as Cleopatra, Queen of the Nile. She became the first black singer to star at La Scala, Italy's famed opera palace. Her song scaled the six-tiered balconies and brushed the gilded ceiling. Yet, certain doors her golden songs could not open. In America, some hotels, restaurants, and stages were still whites only. But television brought Leontine into living rooms. Viewers saw that skin color didn't matter, voice did. And her song was as regal as it was rich and rare. Leontine was never more majestic than as Aida, playing the part she was born to sing as the Ethiopian princess with her skin as her costume, she exp expressed her whole self. Standing on Marion's shoulders, Leontine gave the crowd goosebumps. The song of her soul soared on the breath of her ancestors. When Leontine performed at the Metropolitan Out Opera House in 1955, she blew open the door that Marion left ajar six, left ajar. 
Six years later, Leontine landed her first lead role with the Met in Il Trovatore. As a noble lady in a tragic love story, she got a 42-minute standing ovation. The song of roaring applause shook the walls. Roses at her feet and tears in her eyes, Leontine bowed. She glimpsed the spotlight in the shadow. She knew that shadow was not just hers, but her parents, her teachers, and Marion's. Back in Laurel, Mississippi, songs of pride filled many a heart. The folks there were bowing, too. Yes, the world-famous Miss Price could be all mink and pearls when she wanted to, rolling her R's like an Italian contessa, wearing Viennese hats and silk dresses from Rome. But off stage, she was just Leontine, twisting all night long. Her song sure wasn't the blues. <laughs>